welcome back to the uh, Jack Swarbrick Radio Show. Notwithstanding the fact that I have a uh, face made for radio, we're also uh, videotaping this so we can uh, feature it online. And uh, in this brave new world of multiple technologies, I'm thrilled to be joined by Coach Jackson. Coach, thanks for being here. Yeah, no problem. Just got off the ice. You're on the Olympic rink today, um, reflecting, I take it, the, uh, the ice size of our opponent this coming weekend? Yeah, we have that advantage now to, to be able to practice on the wider sheet because uh, up in Marquette they have an olympic size rink. So it really helps us in uh, preparing for teams uh, that play on that sheet because with the additional 10 feet of width, it, uh, it really changes the game, in, especially in special team situations. It's an interesting year for you guys and that you'll be visiting a number of places and hosting teams that you might not see again for a while with our move to Hockey East. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, I've, I've told many people, I mean, th this may be the last time we play in Marquette for a long time. I don't know that, but, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to change our, you know, feelings towards the people that we've developed relationships with. I'm good friends with guys like Walt Kyle. You know, we'll, st we'll continue to probably uh, communicate, and I would imagine we'll probably play some non-conference games. So it's not like it's a big situation right now. I think the real reminiscence will probably happen later in the year when we get into the playoffs and play in, in Joe Louis Arena, which has probably been a, as rich a tradition as anything in the CCHA. Yeah, that's a great postseason tournament and obviously a great hockey city. Uh, four games into the into the season, off to a good start. What are your impressions of the team at this point? Well, I mean, for the most part, we're pretty pleased. I mean, we've been playing without a couple of our top players um, I think that it's going to help us offensively when we get them back on track. But the guys that have been here have done a pretty good job of making the uh, adjustment, uh, you know, quickly to, you know, how we want to play the game. I thought uh, we played well at the icebreaker, and I thought we played real well last Friday night. Thursday night, I think we were a little too anxious. I think our guys were a little too uptight uh, playing at home, wanting to do well there, and it showed by us. Uh, you know, taking some foolish penalties and also, you know, turning pucks over in the wrong areas of the ice. Plus, we were playing a pretty good hockey team. So um, I, I thought for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty pleased where we are. Obviously, this early in the year, you still have a lot of things to work on. Yeah, one of the hallmarks of the first four games has been some really excellent goaltending by uh, Steve Summerhays. What are your what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, he, he finished the season real strong last year. I knew uh, I was going to go with him early in the year to see if he could uh, – you know, take this job full time, and and he has proven that thus far. And you know, when you get consistent goaltending, it makes up for mistakes. It allows you to stay in games sometimes when you're not 100% ready, and other times it keeps you in games. Uh, you know, when uh, you, you break down or you you have power plays against you. So, you know, you can't win without great goaltending. And thus far, he's proven that uh, you know we've had good goaltending. With a clear number one in the net, how do you balance his workload, both during the week, but also when do you when do you rest him in two game series? How do you make those decisions? Well, I mean, uh, this early in the season, it's not as big a factor. I have to pick spots to play Mike Johnson, who's been a really important part of our team over the last three years. Um, so it'll be you know times that I have to spot Mike, get him some games as well, just in case. You know, we may need him uh, at some crucial point in the season. So it's good to have a second guy that's ready to play. And in order for that to happen, I'm going to have to spot him in. And that'll also be an opportunity for Summer Hayes to get a little bit of a breather. Uh, obviously, this is a team that uh, had a very young nucleus that's maturing and, and getting a little older. But despite the fact that you have so many people back, personalities of teams change from year to year. What do you see in the personality of this team this year that defines it, or is that too early to know? Um, I, I'm really I'm excited by you know the the chemistry that we have right now. I think the leadership is good. Um, you know, we went a little bit different by just naming one captain this year, but I do have a, a leadership committee basically of uh, you know four seniors and, and four juniors, and you know I want them to all uh, be responsible for the leadership of the team. But, uh, you know, for the most part, the chemistry is real strong. Um, I, I think our depth will uh, be very good once we get everybody back in the lineup. And, um, you know, right now, you know, it's an exciting time for us because I think we can only get better, although we got a very demanding schedule coming up here in the next six weeks where we're going to play probably out of the next uh, uh, eight, ten games, we're probably going to play top ten teams uh, on, out of every one of them. 
Yeah, it's a and let the record show for our audience that the AD has nothing to do with hockey scheduling. You can send me your football letters, but uh, that's that's Coach Jackson's uh, role and the conference being so good. Uh, you mentioned having just one captain, and that's a pretty remarkable young guy, Anders Lee. Uh, what was the thought process in deciding just to go with him in the captain slot? Well, you know, it's it, it, first of all, he's he's a guy that can handle that responsibility in a major way, and you know, I think leadership is kind of a you know it's different for everyone. Everybody re responds to it differently, but you know, I always believe that your leadership, you got to have the heart of your team and you got to have the voice of your team. And sometimes that's two or three different guys, but you know, I think Anders has capabilities for both of those things. And, um, that's rare when you find a player that has both of those, uh, those strengths. And, and, um, you know, I, I also thought that I, I frankly, I mean, I think we got some seniors that could have been captains. We have a couple juniors that could have been captains and, you know, I think the most important thing for us is that we share leadership and, and make them all responsible for leading. And uh, Anders, I mean, captaincies in hockey are a little bit different than other sports uh, because, you know, you're responsible to, to, to talk to the referee on a regular basis. You're responsible for a lot more media responsibilities. But um, I think it has a huge impact in, in, in the team chemistry. For some reason, hockey, the captaincy means a lot more than in other sports. And it's looked upon as being a, a big role. I mean, the great captains in the National Hockey League, people know who they were. Right. And it's unusual. You don't see that as much in basketball or in football. I mean, everybody has captains, but, you know, it's, it seems to be a lot more of a visible um, thing in hockey for some reason. Uh, Coach, we suffered a, a, a tough, very early camp uh, injury uh, to Mario Lucia. What's the prognosis on him? Well, he's actually just starting to get his skates on. He's just going through some light load-bearing, uh, weight-bearing exercises. Uh, he's got his cast off. Uh, it's a good sign to see him out in the ice. I think that uh, you know we're probably looking at least three more weeks of rehab before he really gets going and, and starts practicing with us on a on a regular basis. And we're hoping you know that he'll be ready by Thanksgiving. That's kind of the, the where we've put it. And you know he could easily be one of the top freshmen in the country this year. And it's kind of a setback for him, but the exciting thing for us is that we know we'll have him for the entire second half. Yeah, that is great. Who are the other uh, newcomers that uh, that our fans might be uh, might be watching this season? Well, we've been uh, very happy with our freshmen. I think uh, the guy that's been most noticeable is Thomas DePauli from Chicago. Um, he's done a really good job for us, uh, you know, filling in actually at left wing for Mario. And we also had Jeff Costello out, so I needed to move him from center to wing. And he's done a very good job there. He's created a lot of energy for us. He's, he's really been good on the penalty kill. Um, I think Stephen Fogarty is another centerman that uh, is going to be an exceptional player for us right now. He's kind of feeling his way through college hockey. He's a very responsible player, but I, I think he has more to give from an offensive perspective. And he'll, he'll end up being a top two-line center for us someday. Um, Sammy Hare is another Chicago boy, left winger, that's uh, – you know, he's got potential to be a really good pl college player. He's played well for us thus far, gotten probably a lot more ice time than maybe he would have expected or we would have expected early on. But due to the injuries, he's getting that experience, which is only going to help him. And, um, and Andy Ryan is uh, a defenseman that we have from um, Brighton, Michigan. And Andy's a brother of, uh, you know, former player Ben Ryan. And uh, I think he's going to be a real sound defensive defenseman for us as he moves forward here a very smart defensive player and um, somebody that we're going to need to rely on as the season progresses. A lot of talent there and one of the one of the nice things this weekend was we got to uh we got to see some of their family members as pregame uh you introduced all of the the parents who were here with uh with their sons. That's a uh, that's a great great element of the Notre Dame tradition, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, Notre Dame is all about family and um we certainly, you know, enjoy having their families as part of our family, the hockey family, and, you know, to be able to recognize them and more importantly for them to be able to spend a weekend here where everybody gets to meet each other and, and spend time on campus. Obviously, they had the opportunity. It was a good weekend for them to stay and watch football. So it's kind of an entire uh, experience for them, and I think that uh, they enjoy it as much as, uh, as anybody. And, uh, you know, I think the kids look forward to it to some degree because, uh, you know, they, their moms and dads are here a lot, but, you know, some of them come from long distances on that special weekend, so it's, it's, it makes that weekend a little bit more special for them. Well, it was great to see them, and Coach, uh, can't thank you enough for spending some time with us this afternoon, and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Oh!